Hello all, my name is Krishna Ayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, this is the tutorial 2 of PyTorch and in this particular video, we are going to see or we are going to understand what exactly is tensors. We are going to perform some of the operations that can be performed on tensors and then I'm going to actually show you with the help of PyTorch library. So guys, if you have already used TensorFlow, I think tensor should be very, very much easier to understand because it is the basic unit, you know, in the algebraic operations that you're actually performing. And trust me, because of the tensors, we are also being able to use the power of the GPU, you know, where we do a lot of parallel pre-processing, right, or parallel processing itself. Now, going to my previous videos, guys, uh, I hope you all know that we had created one PyTorch underscore env.yml and we installed this libraries. We created an environment env PyTorch. We installed PyTorch, Torch Vision and other libraries like Skykit Learn, Seaborn, Matplotlib, Pandas and NumPy because I'm going to perform a lot of operations onto this. Uh, and this was basically the GitHub link. If you have not done, again, the YouTube link will be given in the description of this particular video. Now let us go ahead and try to understand what exactly is tensors. So guys, tensors is a generalization of vectors and matrices and is easily understood as a multi-dimensional array, right? So it, it is a term and set of techniques known in machine learning and in the training and operation of deep learning models and can be described in the terms of tensors, right? In many cases, tensors are used as a replacement for NumPy to use the power of GPUs. That is the main reason. And PyTorch, they have extensively used tensors because in the in the, in the in the upcoming lessons, you'll be seeing that when I'll be doing some back propagations, I'll be performing a lot of operation with the help of this particular tensors. It will be pretty much amazing and you'll be able to understand. So, uh, and as it is said over here, guys, it is a replacement for NumPy, right? So one more point I really want to add is that tensors are a type of data structure used in linear algebra like vectors and matrices and you can calculate arithmetic operation with tensors and if you don't know guys internally ANN artificial neural networks you know uh, they are hidden layers hidden nodes right weights are getting assigned the inputs is multiplied by the weights and a bias is added and an activation function is applied on top of that so all this kind of arithmetic uh, matrix operation can be performed easily with the help of this particular tensors and it will be pretty much fast okay pretty much fast we'll be seeing that but in this video, what we'll do is that we'll just start with the basics. We'll try to understand what exactly is tensors, how we can create a tensors, how we can create it from a NumPy array, what are the different types of matrix multiplication you can do, and all those things we'll actually uh, understand from this. So first of all, I am going to import Torch. And if you know, guys, in my previous uh, session, we had actually installed the version 1.5.1. Then here I'm actually installing NumPy. So in this, first of all, I've created a list where I'm actually converting this into a NumPy array because the first operation that I'm going to do is that I'll convert a NumPy array into a tensors by using this PyTorch library. So here I've actually created an array. So this is basically my array data type and the array elements is basically having three, four, five, six and it is a single dimensional array. Okay, if you don't trust me, uh, go over here and just type ARR. Now this is basically the single dimensional array. Now in this step, we are going to convert the NumPy to PyTorch tensors. How to do that? See guys, in Torch, you basically have a function which is called as from underscore NumPy. Now, if you press shift tab, okay, always try to press shift tab and see the definition of each and every function, guys. There are many tons of tons of functions that are used in PyTorch. So it is pretty much important uh, that you understand from this by pressing shift tab, you'll be getting all the information. So here it says that it creates a class tensor from a class NumPy ND array. This is pretty much important guys. See, the return tensor and the attribute NumPy array share the same memory. Modification to the tensor will be reflected in the NumPy array too, okay? So let's see. So here I've actually created it. I'll just execute it. So this is basically my tensor, which is having the values three, four, five, six. You can see it is of a type tensor. And there also you they specify you data type, right? Now this data type, there are various data types like int32, int64, float32, float64. But always remember in PyTorch, whenever you're using, it will be coming as torch.int32, torch.int64, uh, something like that. And if I really want to retrieve any of the elements from this, I can similarly use the indexing, uh, indexing technique that is being uh, available in the NumPy. So here you can see that suppose if I want to pick up the uh, zero to first element till the second index, I can basically write like this, colon two. I hope everybody is familiar. If you know NumPy, Pandas, at that time, this kind of indexing is pretty much common. 
Now here you can see that I have actually picked up three and four. Suppose if I really want to pick only the second index, I can also write like this and I'll be getting the second index value that is five over here, zero, one, two. Now, suppose I want to pick a range of values. I can also write one colon four. That basically means one, two, three, right? This four, five, six elements will be retrieved over here, right? So now disadvantage from NumPy, as I told you that when I press shift tab over here, we saw that it uses the same memory location, both tensor and NumPy array, right? So if I do an operation like this, tensors of three is equal to 100, what I'm doing, I'm basically replacing this index value with 100, right? So once I execute this over here, and if I see my tensors value, it will be having 100. So what if, now since this tensors has been created from this array itself, will the change will happen in the array also? And the answer is guys, yes, it will happen because it is using the same memory location. So here you can see both are having the same values, right? Now what to do if I want to prevent this? So here we have a different way of creating tensors, which will just do a copy of that particular array. And that particular function is basically tensor, right? So initially it was from underscore numpy, torch dot from underscore numpy, but this time we will be using torch dot tensor. So if I go and press shift tab, you will be able to see over here, um, it always copies from the attribute or the data that we are actually providing, right? So it is basically fixing that particular problem. So if I create like this, now you can see that these are all my elements. Suppose I say that in my third index, replace it by, with by 120, and then I'm trying to print tensor array, and then I'm trying to print array. In the array, I'm having 100 right now, okay? So once I execute this, you will be able to see that only the changes have happened in the tensor array, not in the other array itself, right? Now there are also different ways how we can create uh, uh, tensors by using the inbuilt function that are present inside torch. So here we have some of the inbuilt functions like zeros, same like numpy guys. Zeros we have, we have ones, right? Here we just need to give the shape of the matrix how we want and then we can also give the data type. Data type always remember you have to give in this particular format like torch.in32, torch.in30, in 64. Like see, if I just write like this and if I press tab, so if I write int, so you see int 16, 32, 64, 8, and there are also like float, right? Float 16, 32, uh, 64. So I can basically use this, right? Once I'm executing it, you can see that I'm getting all the zeros in the matrix 2, comma 3. Similarly, in ones, I will be getting all ones in the form of two comma three. And probably guys, this is pretty much common. I think you should be very much comfortable if you know NumPy arrays, right? Now, coming to the arithmetic operations, what are the different arithmetic operations we will do? Because understand guys, if I am actually trying to create an ANN, that is artificial neural network, there we will be giving the inputs right to the, our hidden layers, right? So there will be a weight that will get initialized. So I have to multiply that inputs with the weights, add a bias. So this type of operations you should be familiar with, right? Where, how we do the dot operation, how we do the arithmetic operation, how we do the addition operation and all. So coming up to this, the first arithmetic operation, we are basically going to write torch dot tensor. Suppose I have initialized two uh, tensors over here, one with the element three, four, five, and other with the element four, five, six. And remember guys, this indexing, can also be done for, uh, you know, two dimensional arrays. Now, how do you create a two dimensional arrays in this? Just let me show you guys. Okay, so two dimensional arrays, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create something like this. Suppose if I write np.arrange, okay, and suppose if I say 0, 15, right, and I say reshape to 5, 3, right, so this will actually give me an array of five rows and three columns. Now, if I try to convert this into torch, torch.tensor, right, like this, right, this will actually get converted into torch. Now, if I, if I store that in a variable, you can see that if I store it in a variable A, and suppose I want to perform any indexing in this two dimensional, because this is two dimensional, right? I've given two shapes like five comma three. You can also convert this into three dimension. Suppose I just want to pick up all these elements, the first column elements, I can basically write something like this, colon, colon comma one, right? Or colon comma zero, sorry, zero index. So I'm basically getting zero, three, six, nine, twelve, right? I can also write zero colon two, if I want to get two, uh, two first uh, columns, 
I can also write like this. So the indexing technique is almost same guys. No need to worry much about the indexing techniques, right? It is same like NumPy. Exactly same like NumPy, no, nothing to worry as such. Now guys, uh, I'm going to perform some operation. The first operation that I'm actually going to do is a simple arithmetic operation. So here I've actually created tensor with three, four, five as element. And here I've actually created four, five, six. If I really want to add like this, I can basically write A plus B. Now, when I write A plus B, automatically the operation will take place where you have, this four will get added to three, five will get added to four, uh, six will get added to five, right? So that same element we are getting over here, seven, nine, 11, right? Four plus three is seven, five plus four is nine, six plus five is 11, right? Then we also have an inbuilt function if you want to perform the same operation, right? How we got this. And there is an inbuilt function which is called as torch.add. So if I see over here, it basically says that add the scalar attribute to each other elements of the input attribute, right? So this is pretty much simple and we are getting the same output, right? Now, similarly, suppose I want to add this and store it in some other variable. Now, if I want to store it in some other variable, first of all, I need to make sure that I create that variable with the same shape, whatever the output shape that we are actually getting. So here, what I've done is that I've used C and I've actually initialized and uh, tensor with three elements where all the values are zero so that and remember this three is because of the shape whatever the output I'm actually getting so because of this I've actually created dot zeros and here I've actually given three now once I execute this you can see that and once I write torch dot add a comma b and in add uh, function you have a third parameter which is called as out this out will be initialized or given the value of this c that basically means whatever the operation is basically taken right it will store that value in this c variable right so once i execute and if i uh, sorry uh, probably i have to execute this now if i if i go and see then you can see that i'm getting 7911 because of this particular out because i've told that whatever addition you are doing you just give that value to the variable c right so because of this you can actually see i'm getting an output over here right now some more operation what I can do is that I can use this add and on top of that, I can use another inbuilt function like sum. So what it will do, first of all, it will add like this four plus three. You can see what kind of operation it will do. First, first it will add four plus three, uh, four plus five, five plus six. So I will be getting three outputs like this, which will be in the form of tensor. So this will be a form of tensor and here I will actually get seven comma nine comma 15 like this, right? Then it is summing up all the numbers over here, right? So summing up seven plus nine is nothing but 16, 16 plus uh, 15 is somewhere around uh, 16, uh, sorry, seven plus nine. Okay, seven plus nine is somewhere around 16. 16 plus uh, 11 is somewhere around 27. So we are actually getting that particular value, okay? So here you can see the output as 27 pretty much simple now the dot product and multi operation multi multiplication operation dot product is pretty much necessary when you are doing two matrix multiplication guys and multiplication operation is normal multiplication operation so here i have initialized two tensors again with the values 3 4 5 4 5 6 and this is having x and y when i write x dot multiplied of y that basically means i'm getting values like 12 20 and 30 so here you can see that how multiplication operation takes place. This four into three is nothing but 12. Five into four is nothing but 20. Five into six is nothing but 30. Now this is with respect to the multiplication operation. This is how multiplication operation actually happens. But if I do dot product, after doing this particular multiplication operation, I am also going to do the addition, like how I've actually shown it over here. So it'll be three multiplied by four plus five into four plus six into five, right? So finally, you can see that when I write X dot uh, Y, I'm actually getting the output as 62. So 30 plus 20 plus 12, pretty much simple. Just try it by yourself, guys. It is pretty much simple itself. The next uh, is basically a matrix multiplication. You can also do matrix multiplication and there is an inbuilt function again, like matmul, okay? So this matmul, and this is an, if you remember guys, this all inbuilt functions are similar to NumPy, right? So it is basically saying you can replace, you can, you can replace, it is just a replacement for NumPy to use the power of GPUs. Why we are doing this? Because we can definitely use the power of the GPUs by using this, okay? That is the power of tensors, multi-parallel processing, okay? And you, you know that how many weights are initialized, how many nodes are there, based on that parallelly all the operation will take place, right? 
So in matrix multiplication, you have matmul function, you have this mm function, and you have x at the rate y. What does this basically mean? Suppose if you want to do matrix multiplication of x comma y, so this is basically the output. I hope you know how to do matrix multiplication. It's simple maths, guys. You have also studied it 10th standard. Instead of using matmul, I can also use mm. This is the short form of matrix multiplication. Mm also you can use. And if you give x comma y, you are basically getting the output. Similarly, instead of this, you can also write x at the rate y okay so this is x at the rate y so uh, you are basically doing a matrix multiplication between x and y that is what this x at the rate y basically mean so yes guys this was some of the basic operation with respect to tensors and now in my next video i'll try to show you how you can do a lot of functionalities uh, which is involved in ANN, like back propagation, how you can find out the derivative with the help of PyTorch, that we are going to see. Please make sure that guys, you understand the theoretical understanding of deep learning. If you, have, if you don't know, please make sure go and follow my deep learning playlist over there. Okay, every, I'm not just going to take the theoretical things guys. There, I'm here, I'm specifically going to show you how we can perform most of the operation, all the operations that are involved in ANN, CNN and RNN. So yes guys, this was all about this particular video. I hope you like it. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you have not already subscribed, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all. Bye-bye.